All right, all right, welcome to your really second day of school. Yes, and I'm not here, but I am because I'm gonna be on YouTube talking to you. It's gonna be good. So I have my first period class right here. You're either in second or fourth, and that's okay. It actually might be in six too. But here's the first thing we're gonna do. You need to know, now I'm talking to my class here. I'm talking to you too here on camera. You need to know how to come to class, how to get to class, how to get in here, and how to start your day properly. Does anybody know how to do that in here? Anybody? What do you think? Go for it. Um, uh, I guess, well, somebody else All right, it's a tough answer. All right, anybody else? Go ahead. All right, come into class quietly, sit down. That's, that's what most people think. Any, anything else? Everybody lives, leaves out this really big thing. All right, so I want you to show me what you already know. So here we go. Everybody, get out. Get out of my class and come on in here. Let's start the day off right. All right, see you outside. Come on. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Come on. Come on in. All right. They all messed up. See you on the inside. Y'all all messed up. Every one of you did it wrong. What did you do wrong? Anybody know? Anybody, when you come into class, you have to realize there's someone in here that's very important. I want you to look at this situation, this situation right here. This is practice for you getting a paycheck one day, right? One day you're gonna have a boss, or you might be the boss, and you'll have employees. Does it make sense to everybody? Those that can start off properly during the day, I promise you they have a bigger chance of making more money. Hmm? What did you do wrong? Did anybody guess? What did you do wrong? All right, here we go. Let's watch this video right here that's going to show you how to do this properly. Here we go. All right, so welcome to world history. Your day will begin not when you're sitting in those seats over there, but it'll begin out here, out in the hallways. And what I want to do is talk about how to start your day. Now, first thing you need to do is you need to recognize that there is an authority in the room. It's the teacher. So I want you to do is I want you to greet the teacher. Let them know that you matter by talking to them, by smiling at them. If we were not living in the COVID days, you would shake their hand. You would do something to let them know that you are there, you are important, and that they are too. That's how you start the day. Let me give you some examples. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? All right. All right, all right, all right. Good morning, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? All right. All right, all right, all right. All right, so after you've greeted your teacher in the proper way, and hopefully you picked out which one was the proper way, you come and you find your seat. You'll have an assigned seat. Make sure you get in that seat. All right, once you're in your assigned seat, go ahead and sit here. And if there should be something on the front, it tells you what to do. But if there's nothing in the front that tells you what to do, sit here quietly and you can talk to each the other students in the class just a little bit. Just don't be loud because you're getting ready to learn. All right, that's how you enter the class properly. All right. Watching the video, we'll throw everybody out of the class and we're gonna practice this one more time. Coming into the classroom, and greeting the teacher in the proper way. So you can start your day off right. Here we go. All right, let's see how they do. All right, come on in, we're late for class. Come on in, come on y'all. Good morning, good smile, eye contact, nice. Good morning, good morning. More? Yes, yes. Hey, hey. Yeah, I like that. Boom. Little elbow punch. Yeah. Little elbows. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning. Yes, about half of them did really good. Let's go in here and talk to them. 
Any of y'all like to be a teacher? Anybody? Come on, don't be shy. Don't be shy. I won't bite you too much. <clears throat> All right, no, no volunteers. That doesn't help. Anybody? What come here, Zach. What does the teacher do? You just got to be, be me for a second. All right, come here, Zach. Stand right here. He's right. used to people beating him up and all. He's a wrestler, so he's used to it. You're good. Have you been wrestling practice at all? Doing any of that stuff? All right, so you just be me, okay? And I'm going to be some of y'all. I saw some of this. Y'all came up and gave me that. But there's something wrong with what I just did. Anybody catch it? But then look at them, look at them. Like this day and age, these masks, take the time to look at them, acknowledge their eyes, all right? And good morning, and give them, give them something like that. Some of y'all did this, came in there, you did the, good morning. Does that look good? No, it's not good, it's not good. So find a way to get in there, acknowledge, look, acknowledge this person is alive by saying their name if you know it, by looking at them, and if they're into the elbow punch, go for that. Everybody with me on that? Let's do it one more time and everybody do it perfect. See you outside. Good job, Zach. That was fabulous. They all looked at me in the eye. They all make me feel like I'm important and that's what you need to do. All right, here we go. Thanks for watching. I remember back in 2019 when people could shake hands. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, we used to be able to touch each other when we greeted each other. Now I'm gonna take this off. Now, let me tell you a story. Um, one of my actually my favorite job as a teacher other than this school I, I got it because I was able to shake hands properly it's crazy the principal there his name was Mr. Ernest and so I knew I was gonna go for the job interview and so I looked him up and I kind of found his face and all this stuff anyways I walked into the school looking good had my tie on and all that stuff and all of a sudden there was three other guys that looked just like me what were they there to do the same thing. They wanted the job too. I found out later that over 150 people had applied for this one job. Why in the world would they give it to me? I had to do something different. I made sure that he felt important and he knew that I knew that I was important. You follow me on this? So I walked in there. Here I am. I'm coming in. I saw the three guys. I was like, oh, I got to get in the back of the line. Well, I looked up. Slow motion now. I looked up. There's Mr. Ernest. How did I know who he was? Because you looked him up. I looked it up. You are so smart. You're listening. I love it. I looked him up. I saw his big, he has a big old head. He looks like Mr. Magoo. You know who Mr. Magoo is? If you don't know who it is, he's a huge head. He looked like Mr. Magoo. And I went over there and I, so I like passed these guys up. I walked right by him and I went over there and I went to shake his hand. You with me? And I stuck my hand out. He wasn't paying attention to me. He had his head down. He had papers in his hand. And I said, I had to say something. I said, I am Jim Horn. And he looked up and he stuck his hand out. And when he did that, I took his hand and I pulled it into me. What did he do immediately when I put, pulled his hand into me? He was like, he was like in my zone. He's in my world now. You with me? And he acknowledged like this guy is something special. He never knew who I was. I said, I'm here for a job interview. He was like, well, and he put his hand on my back. So when he did that, that, that was a power thing. You'll see a lot of leaders, CEOs, and stuff like that. They say, I'm in charge. I'm going to put my hand on your back. Come on in my world. He just took me from the back of the line to the front of the line. We went and sat down in his office and talked. I got the job. You with me on that? So the, the making the person feel important that's going to be your boss or is your boss is extremely important i acknowledged he was alive and important the most important person in my life in that moment in time right and i want you to do the same thing do you have to do that every day no after that moment i got the job i just did my job well i didn't have to do that every day i would see him i'd say good morning mr ernest or i'd say hello mr ernest or i might tell him a joke i brought it down where it wasn't so serious all the time that makes sense all right you want to hear a joke Yes. Okay, why could the bicycle not stand up? Why? It was too tired. Oh. It was too tired? You get it? That's too tired. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> so if you stay on task, if you've done really well, and you have done really well, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little breaks throughout the day because 90 minutes is a long time. Excuse me, 93 minutes is a long time. So here we go. you got two minutes. You can do whatever you want. Ready? 
Go. All right, all right, we're back. So everybody should have at their desk this sheet of paper. That's right. At the top of it, it says, Coach Horns, history class, keys to success. And at the bottom it says attitude. If you don't have it, let me know. All right, everybody should have something to write with. All right, everybody have something to write with. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go through this sheet with you right here. All right, and let me tell you first why I think this is important. What I've done is I've went and found some quotes of people that have been successful in the past. But you, anybody here disagree that Walt Disney was successful? Anybody disagree with that? Yeah, this, Walt Disney was very successful. So I'm going to listen to some of his words, right? It's a good thing to do. So we're going to look through some of these quotes. Now, this is what I want you to do. If you notice on the quotes, this is, you're going to have to participate. There's some blanks. I want you to say what you think goes in those blanks. Tell me what you think goes in there. And here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with it. If you say something different than what that guy said, what you said is probably right. It's probably a good thing to say. You can say these things in different ways is what I'm saying. And then I'm going to tell you the right word. Does that make sense to everybody? So we'll do the first one real slow. Let's see what happens. So keys to success from successful people. The first one says this. Whether you think you can. Good job. Some of you already know it. Whether you think you can. Go ahead and write that in. Or you think you can't. You're right. It's all about, and who said it, by the way? Who said that? It's Henry who? Who's the famous Henry? Henry Ford. Yeah, Henry Ford. The guy who invented the Ford trucks and cars and all that stuff. The Model T. The Ford F-150. That guy right there. Yeah, so he knew that he had to do something crazy to change his life. So he came up with the assembly line. Here, here in America, made it better, interchangeable parts, all this stuff. We'll talk about that stuff later. But anyways, because of what he did and what he believed in himself, he did something that changed literally the world. People all over the world studied this guy. Now this guy I'm gonna mention, he's, he's evil and bad, but he studied him to learn how to, how to do something great over in his area. Adolf Hitler studied Henry Ford. All right, is that, is that not something special there? Adolf Hitler wanted to learn how to organize people. What Adolf Hitler was, did was bad, but he learned from Henry Ford of how to organize people. And Adolf Hitler made Germany more powerful than it ever was in all of its history. Something to think about. So show some respect there, not to Adolf Hitler, but to Henry Ford. Anyway, so whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. So believe in yourself. You can do whatever you want. Here we go. Number two. Oh, this is a good one, y'all. Check it out. Here we go. All our dreams can come true. Now, pause right there. Don't go any further. All our dreams can come true. How many of y'all have dreams in here? If you don't raise your hand, you, you do have dreams. You do want to do stuff. It might be something local, something at this school, making a team, uh, starting a business or whatever, but you all have something you want. Getting that special girl be girlfriend or whatever, getting that toy, getting that new game thing. You'll all have small dreams and one day you'll have big dreams too. Y'all follow me on that? This guy said all of our dreams can do what? Come true. If we have what? Courage. Boom, you are on it. You gotta have courage. C-O-U-R-A-G-E. You gotta have courage, go ahead and fill that in. Courage to pursue them. And his name was Walt Disney. Walt Disney. That's right. You got to have courage. Because I go and tell you, it's risky to go after your dreams. There are some things that I haven't done yet. That I, I'm like, oh, I want to do it. I want to go. One of the things I want to do, I have a dream. I want to start my own bicycle shop. I almost rode my bicycle to work today, but I didn't. But I want to start my own bicycle shop. But I haven't done it. My wife's like, Tim, you need to do it. And it's like thinking about the money. I've never, I've never run a business like that before. Will I do it? Right now, I don't have the courage to do it. I don't feel like I'm ready with raising a five-year-old and all that stuff, but maybe this is the right time. Maybe, I, maybe I'm missing an opportunity. So I challenge you guys, find courage within yourself. Now, here's what's special about it. Check this out. This guy is talking about dreams. Think about what he did. Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Bugs Bunny, Disneyland, Disney World, all that stuff. 
Could he have easily not done that stuff? Easily not done it. But he chose to. Could you do something similar? A lot of people would say no. How many people are will like invent Disneyland? You see what I'm saying? That's tough. It is. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. Just because something, because something is hard or tough, does that mean you can't do it? If you if something's hard, I tell I tell Big Boy this all the time. I say, Big Boy, I'll go, it's too hard. That I, I'll say, that means you can do it. If it's impossible, that means you can't do it. I'm never going to outrun Hussein Bolt, the fastest man on the earth. That's impossible. I'm not going to do it. But I can try. It might be hard. And that's okay. It's hard. I got up this morning at 5 o'clock. I said, I'm going to go run four miles. Got up, ran four miles. Was that hard? And it was not hard at all. It would be hard for you. You know why? Because you've never done it. I've been doing it for years. So it's easy now. When I first started doing that, I wake wake up five o'clock, go run five miles. I used I used to go between four and nine miles before air, before school, right? But it was was it hard? It wasn't hard for me because I've been doing it already. The more you do hard things, the easier hard things become. How you like that? Yeah. All right. Let's move to the next one. Here we go. Number three. Fill it in. Oh, this one's so good. Ooh, wait. Yes, it is. Here we go. I do the... I'm, wait, hold on. I'm going to pause. I'm going to try to say it like he spoke. He was tall. He was thin. And he had a high voice. And one, of the most, one of the greatest men to ever walk the earth. Are you ready? I do the very best. There you go. The very best. I know how. The very best. That's right. I can. And I mean to do so until the very best. end. Oh. <laughs> and they did. He did his very best until the end. They shot him in the head. In 1865. Who is this guy? Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. He did his very best. And he changed this country. Him and some other people changed this country in becoming the great place that it is now. Yes, ending slavery here. It's going away. All started because of this guy. He could have easily gone along with the crowd and been like, yeah, it's just the way it's always been. And it's going to be hard to change our country. And guess what he did? He stepped up, became the president, knew the Civil War would start. It's like, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna fix this place. And they did. Yeah, no other country can say they've done that. No country has done that. Thank you, Abraham Lincoln. Do you know how to spell Lincoln? Uh, L-I-N-C-O-L-N. Boom. Great job. Questions about that one? All right, number four. Legacy. All right, the word legacy is in there. Do y'all know what that means? Anybody know what legacy like a, means? Like a past that's like memorable or something. Yes, yeah, what you're remembered for. Does that make sense? So I taught school in Georgia. I had yearbooks for back there when I was a teacher there. The students signed my stuff and everything like that. And they remember me. Some of them will email me and stuff. So what they remember from me as their teacher is my legacy. When you die or I die, I will have left a legacy behind with my students, my family, my friends. Does that make sense? So think about that. Think about how you want your legacy to be. So watch what this guy says here. This guy was a great author. Who is he, by the way? William, the great William. Shakespeare. William Shakespeare. Yeah, that's right. So go ahead and write his name in there. William Shakespeare said this. How do you spell Shakespeare? You, you write shake, then you write spear. <laughs> then you put an E on the end of it. <laughs> Shakespeare. He said this. No legacy is so rich as, and there's a lot of words you can put here that are, that are good. No legacy is so rich or good as being remembered for what? What would you like to be remembered for? Say, tell me a couple of them. Can anybody tell me anything? What would you like to be remembered for? Let's say you, you're gone. You had to move out of the school today, and how do you want people to remember you? As a great athlete? A great, I know Zach would like to be remembered as a great wrestler. Am I wrong? I mean, it sounds weird talking about yourself, but am I wrong? No, I'm not. Anybody? Great cheerleader? Great attitude? Friendship. What? Friendship. A great friend? I like that. Oh. How about caring? Strong? Funny? How about any, any of those good? Y'all like those? Okay. He said so. He said one that started with an H. Can you guess it? A very happy person. I like that. That's not it, but I like that. That's good. Anybody? Come on. H-O. Honor. 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 
He was very honorable. I like that. That's even better, I think. But go ahead. H O N. Boom! No legacy is so rich as honesty. Being honest with yourself. Are you doing all you can to make yourself better? Or making yourself what you need to be for your family and your fans? Or are you are you one of these that's like, I, I can't do it, it's too hard. Like, they did this to me, so I can't do it. That's called the victim status. I can't do it because it's because of that person. I can't, I, it's his fault. Just go ahead and be honest. Are you doing what you can? Does that make sense to everybody? You got to, you, if you didn't make the team, you didn't get the job, you're not getting the money you want from the job that you pursued to get. It's it's on you. Did, did you, or is it somebody else's fault? Is somebody else's fault? So William Shakespeare, be honest with yourself, and you will achieve so much more. I challenge you to do that. All right, two more, real quick. Here we go. So who said this one? Number five, Albert Einstein. It's written there for you. This guy is considered maybe the smartest man to walk the earth. There's this kid right now from Russia. His IQ is doubling Albert Einstein's. It's twice what Albert Einstein's is. I don't know a top number, but it's like 170, 180 or something like that. It's much higher than, I don't know y'all that well, but it's much higher than the average person like me. I'm just an average guy. That's right. And anyways, his was, this guy's double. Anyway, so Albert Einstein, he says this. All right, all right, do y'all like the word difficulty? When something's difficult, y'all like that? It's going to be difficult. Do you like that? <laughs> Most of us don't. But look what he said about difficulty. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. opportunity. So the way I like to look at it is this. If you see a problem out there and nobody's solved it, it's difficult to solve it, then you, you step up and like say, this is an opportunity for me to, to like get rid of this problem and it might one day make you lots of money. Right? Like right now, is there a COVID situation going on? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of problems in there. We don't have like a quick way to tell if you have it or not. Do you think anybody's working on a quick way to tell if you have it or not? I love for like every person when they step into school, like shoot them like they, they're, they're doing the heat thing on their forehead. Be able to just like shoot a little laser at them and go, bloop, oh, they don't have it. Bloop, they don't have it. Bloop, they don't have it. But people are working on stuff like that. So in the middle... Imagine the person that invents something like that. Let's say that you invented that. What's going to happen to your pocketbook overnight? Yeah, your pocketbook's going to be like huge. You have all the money you want, and you made the world a better place. Isn't that awesome? Yes, it is. All right. So in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. There will be some difficult things this year. Step up and say, I got this. Let's go. All right, here, number six. Here we go. Lad, this guy, his name is Zig Ziglar. All right. He said this. Success is the key. Starts with an M. Um, uh, uh, M A. Uh, Success is the M A. Is the M A X. That's right. Is the success is the maximum utilizations of the ability that you have. Do you have to win to be successful? You do not. If you've done all you can in preparation. And then you get out there, and we'll use lingo from wrestling, and you get on the mat, and you lose, you are successful because you've made yourself better. And then you do it again. You go back into the, you know, and you practice the cheerleading thing, or you practice the, you know, throw in the pitch, or the quarterback thing, or the hitting, the getting stronger, the bigger, the faster. Being able to read, practice reading, and that'll be really good for everybody. So the maximum utilizations of the abilities that you have. Questions, comments, or rude remarks from anybody? All right, so what you have to do here. All right, we're going to have our first little moments. It's going to be a little bit odd for y'all, but it's good. You're going to like it. It's a little bit of difficulty, which won't be that big a deal. All right, so this is what you're going to do. You are going to, all right, right there out beside one, two, three, four, five, six. Don't look at each other's papers. What I want you to do is I want you to pick out the one you like the best. It speaks to you the best. Circle it. Pick out the one that you like the best. I'm going to give you one minute to figure out why you like it the best. One minute, and you can be prepared to tell somebody about it. Ready? Go. One minute.
but you know why? You pick what you pick, and that's what you're going to do. You're going to talk. Leave your mask on. Okay, I want everybody to stand up. Stand up. Go ahead, stand up. Put your mask on. Stand up. Now you're going to go, and you're going to stay with somebody until I tell you to move, and you're going to tell each other which one you pick and why with your mask on. So everybody stand up, move around, find somebody, talk to them. Three, two, one. Which one did you pick and why? Go. You want to go first or do you want me? Okay, um, the, pick one, the one I picked is the fifth one, which is the middle of the fifth piece, lies opportunity, which is by Albert Einstein. I chose the um, second one with Walt Disney because it like speaks to me and I've always liked Disney. And I like this one because I feel like it motivates me when I'm in like a difficult situation. There's always going to be like an opening, like an opportunity for me to improve. And, and like, yeah. <laughs> is this on still? <laughs> All right, switch, switch. <laughs> it's on, isn't it? Oh, hey. I didn't know that. Talk to somebody else. Tell them what you pick. All right. That'll be that. So, y'all do the same thing. They're walking around, talking to each other, sharing. About every 20 seconds, switch it. It'll be good. All right, switch one more time, one more time. Just three people will be good. Talk to them, move around, get that blood going. So take opportunity to enjoy this getting up, moving around. It's good for you. Talk. A lot of talking is learning, but listen also. Listen and talk. It's good for you. Four, three, two, one. Here we go. Don't sit down yet. Here we go. If you pick number one, come underneath the American flag. If you pick number two, come under by the TV. Number three, by that door. Number four, over there by my globes. Number five, under here by, by the boards, the two boards. And number six, come up here with me. I'll put my mask back on. Anybody? Sweet. So y'all are number what? Two. two. How many of y'all are number two? One, two, three. Where do y'all? Are you number two? Yes. Is that number two? Yes. Yeah, so number. Are you number two? Are you, where do you? Number two. And y'all are number three. So it looks like number two wins. So all our dreams can't come true if we have the courage to pursue them. All right. All right. Good job, everybody. Have a seat. All right, let's get ready for the next thing. Time for a little fun. Let's get, the goal of this is for you to get to know each other a little bit better and for you to just get up, move around, have a good time. Everybody with me? Okay, so go ahead, stand up or sit on your desk. Either way, it's fine. All right, here we go. And so what I want you to do, leave your mask on and I want you to line up from that side of the room to this side of the room, kind of start over there and work your way around in alphabetical order. You got to figure it out. Alphabetical order by first name. So A over there, A over there, Z over there. All right, so the class's instructions were to line up in alphabetical order from that side of the room over to that side of the room, A to Z by their first name. And are y'all ready? You think you've got to figure it out? Let's see if we've done it or not. All right, so like, tell me your first name real loud. Like, you can move your mask, whatever, then tell me real loud, and I'm gonna say it back, and we'll y'all help me figure out, make sure it's in the right order. And you do the same thing. I'm turning this off. Hit pause. Here we go. This time you're gonna do line up in alphabetical order from that side of the room, that side of the room by your last name. By your last name. Three, two, one. Hit pause and do it. It was hard and difficult, wasn't it? But it was worth it. Here we go. So this one's going to be even better. I think you'll do it. Let's time this one. How fast can you do it? Are you ready? The clock is ticking. Are you ready? 
Birthday, January all the way to the December. Ready, go. Line up by birthdays. Paul does this. First period class, they did it in 12 seconds. They lined up from January to December in 12 seconds. How long did you do it? All right, from first period, they told you, this is what you gotta do now. You gotta line up by age. Here we go. Youngest to oldest. Three, two, one, go. See how fast you can do it. Go. First period did it in 18 seconds. I wonder how long you did it. Let's hear from them. You gotta do, you gotta line up by foot size. I like it. Smallest feet all the way to the largest feet over here. This will be fun. Have fun. That was fun and awkward dealing with the shoes. Yeah, I actually took somebody's shoe and put it in my hand. I had a crock in my hand. Found out that girl shoes are two sizes smaller. So this time you need to line up by the length of your hair. Shortest over here, all the way here to the longest. Go, go, go. Last thing we're doing. I hope that was fun. Take advantage of the times when we're gonna be moving around. It's really good for us in class. So let's move on to our next little topic. What we're gonna do is talk about a very important word. It's called responsibilities. So look on your sheet. Notice it has a word responsibilities on there. And you'll notice there's two topics. It's the teacher's responsibilities and then it's the student's responsibilities. Now notice you, I put mine first. I want you to know the teacher's responsibilities. Does anybody know why I want y'all to know that? Can anybody tell me why? Why? Go for it. So the classroom feels like a safer environment. Okay, so the classroom feels like a safer environment. Watch this. Who really knows what's going on in here? Does my boss know? Mr. Adderhold doesn't really know. Mr. Herrera doesn't really know. Y'all do. Y'all need to hold me accountable to live up to my job, which are these things right here. Because if y'all don't do that, I might slack off. I might kick back and just, let's not you know, do things the way it's supposed to be done. Let's do it the way it feels good for me as a teacher. So I'm telling y'all this, so y'all hold me accountable to it. I want to do all these things, so if I'm not getting it done, you got to let me know. Come to me, talk to me, say, Coach Horn, I'm just oh, I'm not getting it, it's not working. You don't follow me on this? First thing I got to do, here we go. I have to, and go ahead and fill these in. You will turn this in, by the way. This sheet right here will be your first grade. I will give everybody 100 because you're going to get it. This will be a first easy grade, just fill in these blanks, and you'll get a 100 for your first grade. I do this every year for the past 20 years. This sheet has been going around 20 years. Everybody starts off with 100. This is so easy. Just fill in the words. All right, here we go. So first one, my responsibilities as your teacher. And you guess what they are. My first one is this, is to treat you with? Respect. Yeah, everybody says respect. Yeah, but don't put that in there yet. All right. They leave out this other word, with care. I should care about you. And I do as an individual. That's why I want to get to know your name and what you like and what you do and all that stuff. I do care about you being successful in here. So I'll do whatever I can. I'll wear myself out so you'll make it. Yes, I will. And you'll see that happen. I won't just make those words. I'll actually live up to that. Here we go. So to treat you with care and, you already said it, respect. respect. Yes, and we'll talk about what respect is, which is an amazing thing later on. Any questions about respect before we move into Pat on this one? Okay, I know y'all know what it is. We'll talk more about it later on. So treat you with care and respect as an individual. I will, before I leave this one, though, I want to say this. There's this thing called the golden rule. Do y'all know what it is? Uh, treat, uh, do unto others as you do unto yourself. Yeah, do unto others how you would treat yourself. Okay, that's the golden rule. I like a better rule than that. I like to call it the platinum rule. Treat others how they want to be treated. Let that one sink in. Does everybody want to be treated the same? No, some of y'all want to, like, let's, let's talk, let's be friends, let's be around, let's hang out. Others want a little bit of distance. Am I right? People don't all want to be treated exactly the same. So get to know each other well enough that you can treat them how they want to be treated. I may not, they may not want to be treated how you want to be treated. Just remember that. That's something just to think about. Questions, comments on that one? Pretty good one. All right, here we go. So that's my first thing. I have to respect you. Right, number two, to provide you an... Appropriate. I hear appropriate. That's good. Don't write it in there. That's not it. Classroom environment. What do you think? Safe. 
I, that, I have to do that too, and that's a part of it. It could be on the sheet, but don't write that one in. It starts with an O. Uh, okay. O R. O R D. Ordinary. No. An ordinary classroom. No. <laughs> o R D E R. Order. order. An orderly classroom. Write that word in there. Orderly classroom. O R D E R L Y. Provides you an orderly classroom. Does anybody know what that means, though? Uh, so everything's organized and in place. Uh, I'll explain it. Yeah, so like some teachers, when they, they look at this, they think it has everything has to be in their its spot. It has to look pretty and cute and all that stuff. That's not the way I look at it. I need it to be a place where you can learn. Can you learn in a messy place? Yeah, you can. Oh. Yeah, you can. Let's say we're doing art. We're drawing stuff, and we have you know, pens and paper all over the place and the desks are all over the place. Can you work in that? Yeah, as long as it's set up for the environment. Right, so right now, let's say it was all like, y'all were all on top of each other and it was unorganized and all that stuff. Would it be harder to learn? Yeah, so I need an orderly classroom where you can learn. So that's why we have things set up the way they are and you'll do certain things and help out and everything like that, it'll be really good. All right, number two. Number, or excuse me, number three, to provide the, or excuse me, hold on, to provide the necessary, here we go, you ready? The necessary discipline. Yes, I am to provide discipline. I, I don't like this one, but I do because it, it can teach you something valuable. There's two types of discipline out there. The one y'all all just thought of is what type of discipline? Who's disciplining you? Me. Me coming down and punishing you or making you feel like you're in trouble because you messed up or Mr. Adderhall punishing you, ISS, OSS, all that stuff to get you to act the right way or to do what's right. Who likes doing that? Raise your hand. I despise it. I don't like it at all. I don't like I don't like it. I'll do it. I'll do it if I need to. If I'm ever your coach, you'll see we'll discipline you from time to time when you mess up and all that stuff. Zach's been through some of that. Then it's it's stuff like that's gonna happen. Alright, but I don't like it. Because there's this other type of discipline. Guys, it's all it's a it's powerful. You can get anything done. Literally anything. Does anybody know what that discipline's called? You put a word in front of the word discipline. It starts with an S. If you can do this, you can do anything. Self-discipline. Boom! You have to be self-disciplined. You don't have to write that in, in, in anywhere. But guys, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. I'm going to provide discipline that I don't enjoy giving to y'all. Because you should already have or you're already working on self-discipline. You have goals, I hope. If you have, don't have goals right now, we're going to help you develop some goals. And you go out and do it because you, you want to do it. You're self-disciplined. That makes sense to everybody? All right, find that self-discipline within yourself and then work on it every day. All right, here we go. Next one. Number four. This is a good one. To provide the appropriate... It starts with the M. In the military, they did really good at this. M-O. Mo. Motivation. Boom! Boom, boom, boom. It was crazy. When I was in the military, I was in basic training. They were preparing us. That classroom, basic training is a classroom. They preparing us for what? War. To go to war. They handed me a gun that had a big old knife on the end of it called a bayonet. And they put a plastic dummy in front of me. And I was standing around 300 other soldiers. And a guy got up in the tower and he, he said, that's what I want you to do. I want you to stab that dummy in front of you, and I want you to start yelling, kill. Oh, my goodness. All these young men were hollering, kill, at the same time, and we were stabbing these dummies. Was that a motivating environment? It was scary for some people, but it was motivating, but they had to get us ready for what? Battle and war and all that. That's what they, they were doing. I remember, I remember taking the gun and hitting the, this thing, and it, it cut my finger. The gun was, had part of its metal, it cut my finger, and I didn't even know it. There was pain and blood dripping from my hand. I didn't even know it. It was motivating, and they got the job done. 
when I left that classroom basic training, I was, a, I was ready to go to war. I was a good soldier. Does that make sense to everybody? One of my jobs is not that for y'all. <laughs> We're not getting ready for war. We're getting ready for life, to go on to be great people that can contribute to this world. So I want to give you that. If you learn history along the way, that's great. <laughs> and if you learn to be a great person out in the world out there, you know very little history, that's great too. So be great, contribute, it's going to be awesome. Here we go. Next one. Last thing, number five. My responsibility is to teach you the required... Am I done? It's really, it's starting with C. Uh, it's a new word for some of y'all. C-O-N. The required content. Yes, ma'am. The required content. The state of Alabama has given me this list of stuff. We'll go through there. They're the Alabama standards. And I'll teach those to you. And I'll teach a little bit more just because it's fun. Yes, you'll have a good time with that. All right. I'm going to pause right there. This is what I want you to do right now. I want you to take about 20 seconds. I want you out there on the side. Come up with one more responsibility you think I should have. One more you, that I should have. Write that out on the side next to that. And take about 20 seconds, think about it. I'm gonna have you share it and all that stuff. It won't take too long, but what else should I do? What are some other responsibilities you think I should do? Questions? Three, two, one, go. Two, one. Who would like to share another responsibility that I should have? Yes, ma'am. Like having a comfortable environment, not like seat-wise, but like having the trust with like students to know that they can come to you for anything. I like that. Yeah, Learn, learning trust with respect. Here's the hell, I'll make a statement. It'll sound kind of weird at first, but if you think about it, it's awesome, okay? I am not your friend. None of your teachers are your friends. Okay, it sounds, sounds weird, right? But here's the deal. We will be friendly with each other, though. Like, we're not going to call each other up and say, hey, what's up, girl? That's what you're doing. We're not going to be, like, friends like that. We don't need to have that type of relationship. It breaks down the, the, the teacher-student situation. It really does. I don't want to be so close to you that I can't be your teacher. I can't be the authority. I want to be the authority in here on world history. But I, want to, I want you to trust me enough to, hey, you got an issue? Come. I'll talk to me. We'll figure it out. Any issue you got, we will address it. Anything at all. If you're feeling uncomfortable somewhere else, come to me. We'll talk. We'll figure it out. I like that. Are we friends? No. Yeah. But, but we're friendly. We like each other. We want to be around each other. We're going to help each other. You like that? Good stuff. All right. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. A positive classroom. I'm going to do my best for that. I promise you will come in. That's my blood type. You've heard already. I literally have B positive blood. Isn't that crazy? Yes. It's all about positivity. If you have the right frame of mind, the right attitude and effort, you can do anything. You can I'm with you on that. Let's, let's be positive. Let's be positive together. So I challenge you. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, y'all. Remember, I challenge you to be like that because it will make it better. Anybody else want to share something? All right, here we go. Your turn. Um, we're going to go quick on this for your responsibilities because I know you already know them. You're all bright students. We're going to go quick on this one and because class is about to end. Here we go. Your responsibilities as my students and as learners. Here we go. To treat me with respect. care and respect. I want you to care about what's going on. Do you think I will ever have any problems and issues? Yeah, I will. I already got one. I can't be here tomorrow. My son, big boy, he can't, he can't like go anywhere. So I have to take the day off and babysit him, which I will love, but he can't go to school. So I, that's the only thing I can do is take, take a day off to take care of my son because he doesn't have nowhere to go. Does that make sense? His school has started, but they didn't go to school on Tuesdays and Thursdays until next week. So I had a problem, an issue. I can't be here. Y'all are being helpful. The hell let me get through that. Y'all care about me. Thank y'all for being cooperative and helpful. That's awesome. All right, here we go. To treat me with care and respect. What's the number one way you can show you respect me? If you say yes, sir, no, sir, that helps. What else could you say? All right, listening when, when I'm, I'm teaching, trying to help you. Don't and interrupt. Don't interrupt. Well, that's fine. Sometimes if you do interrupt, like I'll pause. But be honest. Anything else? All right, good deal. Think about it. We'll talk about respect more later. Here we go. Number two, to attend classes regularly. 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 That's a, a weird word I'm saying there. Eric, did you get that one? Regularly. Regularly. 
regularly. Is that how you say it? Regularly? 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 <laughs> yeah, come look. This is a weird year. Come all you can. If you feel a little bit sick, guess what? Don't come, and it's cool. It's all cool. Especially when we get our map books, we'll be doing a lot more online where you can just kind of just get it and go, get it and go. We'll be talking a little bit, working on our computers a lot. So come come to school all you can. I will be here all I can. Here we go. Number three. This is the big, the big one for me. Okay? This is the big one. I would star this one right here. Are you ready? Two words. Number three, your responsibility as a student. To be, it's a C word. C has two O's. Co- Cooperative. Your job is to be cooperative. C O O P E R A T I V E. I'll say it one more time. C O O P E R T A T I V E. You are all being very cooperative right now. And for cooperating, this will be an orderly classroom. All right. So your job is to be cooperative and not. What's the D word? It messes things up. This, say it, disrespectful. disrespectful. Don't do that either. It's, but what's worse is, there you go. Don't be disruptive. Don't be disruptive to the learning environment. Yeah, so like, like if they say you're having an issue, let's not like, like spell it out in the classroom. Let's find a different time when I'm, we're doing the breaks or whatever. You gotta, don't just, don't just say, I gotta use the bathroom and just storm out or whatever. We can, we can do things without disrupting, right? So be cooperative, not disruptive, and things will be really well. That's a great responsibility of yours. All right, number four. This is a big one for your, for your grade sake. All right? Two, study and do your work because effort equals what? Success. Everybody knows that. If you put, you don't even have to put a lot of effort into it sometimes. If you put, I like this word better, consistent effort. If you come and try a little bit every day, a little bit in anything, you will be successful in the end. I, I found this, look, I found this in my learning and in, in my athletics. If I, if I kill it one day and say I'm, I'm, I'm doing workouts and I just kill it, the next day, how do I feel? I feel bad. I'm worn out. I can't, and I have a hard time doing anything the next day. But I found if I if I do a lot one day, but not 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 a whole bunch, not 100 percent. I do a lot one day. The next day, guess what? I can still do a lot. And the next day, I can still do a lot. The next day, I can still do a lot. But if I kill it, I just I just go all to the extreme. I just ruin myself, my body. I just did all I could. And I collapse. I can't do nothing the next day. Some, there's something to think about consistently, being able to do it every day. I don't know, something to think about. So your job, bring effort, you'll be successful. Last one, number five, to learn and master the required content. All right, so who in here now knows what the word master means when it comes to learning about history? What does that mean when you're learning about history and you're, you have mastered a topic? You understand it and you can learn. You understand it and you can, it's really easy, you can have a conversation with other people about it. When we're done, you should be able to talk about Mesopotamia with other people and how it applies to our lives today. The way the Egyptians lived and what can we learn from them and their screw-ups. How the Romans lived and what they did that was good, what they did that was bad, and can you talk about it to make your life a better? Does that make sense? That's the point of history, remembering it. If you, if you tear all of our history away, if it's gone, and we don't have it there to learn from, guess what? We will do what to the mistakes that happened in the past? We'll, we'll keep doing them again and again and again. So learn about history. Do you have to know everything about history? At your age, I want you to know just enough that you're, you're interested to know more. And as you get older, you'll find that many of you will just watch History Channel all the time <laughs> because it's really cool. You want to know the details and all that stuff. All right, questions, comments, rude remarks, anything at all? All right, we're going to pause right there. Thank you for joining class. I hope you did a good job. I hope you were cooperative, not disruptive. We're going to end right here. Watch CNN 10 right here at the end, and then be good to the sub. She's amazing. She's awesome. And you stay amazing yourself. We'll see you all later. All right, so CNN 10, YouTube. Let's go.
All right, so enjoy CNN 10. You guys have a fabulous day, and I'll see y'all on Tuesday. I'm Coach Horn. See you later.